गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स आई फील एम एंस प्लेजर टू बी हियर अगेन फॉर माई कोर्स एयरक्राफ्ट सिस्टम्स इन दिस कोर्स आई एम इन मॉड्यूल वन टूडे इट्स माई लेक्चर नंबर सिक्स इन दिस आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट मिशन सिस्टम्स एंड सब सिस्टम्स एज यू नो आई एम डॉक्टर वाई डी द्विवेदी प्रोफेसर from institute of aeronautical engineering hyderabad india you know that we have already covered lecture up to lecture number 5 in that we have seen how the structural systems and their components then we have seen the avionic system then control system and so on we have already covered in this lecture i am going to discuss about mission system and this mission system is very important and as the name suggests that this system is to perform some specific missions especially this mission systems are used for military aircraft fighters reconnaissance anti submarine warfare dog fight and other so many missions aircraft has to perform and what are the systems those are very important for that type of requirement we have to consider in this lecture so in today's topic i am going to cover I, i will first revise the topic and then i will start the mission system in mission system we consist of sensors mission computing and weapon system as i told you earlier that mission systems are mostly used for the defense aircraft military navy air force army coast guard bsf and all in india uh, they have the different types of aircrafts and those aircrafts are used for different types of mission as per the their design so to perform the mission there is some special type of equipments needed and these equipments are operated with the help of some systems those systems are called the mission system i am starting with revision and you know that this diagram i have shown you earlier also and today if you see the aircraft in this diagram we have here this is the aircraft this aircraft is can be divided into the four major verticals they are the airframe structural system another is the vehicle system third one is avionic system and fourth one is the mission system we are here in today's class we are here and this will be the this is our the last uh, system and it is called the mission system and as i have just uh, explained you that mission system consist of sensors mission computing and the weapons you can understand that, that the what is the meaning of sensors and the mission computing means there are some computers the, those computers are going to compute the necessary requirements parameters after getting the input from the sensor and then this computer will give signal to the weapons and these weapons may be missile then bombs and guns then different types of weapons are delivered as per the guidance of the computer system this is for the today's work these three items we will be discussing as a new topic however i have to revise this airframe structural system this consists of the wings empennage and the fuselage then we have the vehicle system in vehicle system we can say the fuel system propulsion system flight control system and hydraulic system if you talk about the avionic system we can say that navigation control display system and communication system so navigation and the communication and then display in the cockpit you can see different uh, gauges are there different instruments are there on the cockpit the pilot has to read pilot has to understand these things and pilot has to explain uh, uh, this 
pilot has to see this display and he has to he or she has to act accordingly and if anything is deviating from the required parameters the pilot has to take necessary action so i will go one by one you might have seen that i have already discussed about wing and you know the wing is the main component which produces the lift and also it carries the fuel a huge amount of fuel is carried inside the wing then we have the impenes so if i draw a diagram of the aircraft like this here is the tail this is the wing so this part is called the impenes where you have the vertical this is the rudder here is the elevator and this part is called the impenes okay this backward part where we have the vertical stabilizer horizontal stabilizer rudder elevators and all this this part is called the impenes impenes is behind if you see the boeing aircraft the behind and if i ask where is the your black box okay recently you might have seen that there was a accident of helicopter in in that uh, general bipin rawat cds has met with accident the investigating team was searching for the black box so what is the black box and where it is located so if you see this is the fuselage okay here is the cockpit this is the your impenes and your black box is located here at the tail tail and this is the because very less impact will be experienced in the impenes most rear most part of the impenes where we put the black box what is the color of the black box it is not a black the color of the black box is amber amber you might have seen that it is in the uh, signal light you have seen some reddish color so that color is called amber color this amber color is very much visible from long distance and this black box is also painted with a fluorescent paint this black box also having the emergency signal communication made a made a it will uh, propagate the signal so it is very easy to detect this black box the black box is used for the black box consist of the three parts one is the voice recorder voice recorder then parameter recorder of engine and aircraft and third one is the standby so the first one will record the voice any type of voice will be recorded second will any mechanical electrical or any type of failures or any type of mal functioning of any of the system will be also recorded and if any one of these two is failed the standby system will take over and if it is voice is failed it will record the voice if it is other the second one is failed it will start recording other things so it is a recording of all type of events any type of voice or any type of mal functioning or any type of things are happening inside the aircraft this black box will try to record the all the things so that is the uh, purpose of this system so i am talking about not this black box i am talking about the airframe and structural system so here we have the wing then impenes and then we have the fuselage this body is called the fuselage fuselage in this fuselage all the people's here is the cockpit this is the cockpit here you may have dome it is radar dome 
here is the cockpit here is the pilot and then here you have one gate then you you have here some windows and here so many people are sitting here all the passengers up to here and here the wings are here so all and here is the keel all this is the strongest part of the aircraft which is below the fuselage and all your wings are mounted here and in wing we have the engine mostly so how a very huge amount of loads are wear by the wings the thrust of the engine the weight of this engine the lift also produced in this so a huge amount of weight and then so this is the importance of the fuselage now i will come to the second vertical it is a vehicle system the vehicle system consists of the fuel system propulsion system flight control system and hydraulic system in aircraft we have the fuel fuel normally we use the at fk50 in most of the aircraft except a very light piston engine aircraft like cessna and all they are using the four stroke four or six cylinder piston engine there we use the gasoline or petrol however in all this turbo engines we don't use the petrol or diesel we use the atfk 50 so what is the atfk a t f k minus 50 it is a aircraft turbine fuel kerosene it is a kerosene and it is a minus 50 this kerosene can work up to minus 50 Degree centigrade of atmospheric temperature. So, if you want to fly in a very very low temperature, where the temperature is minus seventy, minus hundred, minus hundred fifty, and all, ATFK will not work like Antarctica. In Antarctica, if we use ATFK, because I was there in Antarctica for three months in nineteen ninety nine. and we have operated the helicopter chetak i was in charge for two chetak and we have flown from antarctica and we used to mix atfk with some additives those additives are having very very low freezing point like methanol or ctc carbon tetrachloride and other some chemical liquids are there those we, we have to mix as per the minus temperature if the temperature is very very cold the percentage of this mixing of additives will be increased if it is a very up to 100 up, up to minus 100 we can use up to 2% and if it is going more than that we can in, uh, increase the percentage to 3% 2.5% however this will affect the performance of the aircraft because the engine is designed for a particular fuel and if we deviate from that fuel the thrust parameters of the engine will slightly change but it is acceptable maybe 2 to 5% of the thrust may change so like this we have to use so fuel if you see we have fuel system we have the aircraft fuel system and we have the engine fuel system in aircraft fuel system the fuel tanks their supply line fuel pumps these are called the aircraft fuel system and after this fuel system when it goes to the engine just before the engine the engine fuel system start in engine fuel system we have the uh, this uh, engine driven pump we have the filters we have the uh, lines we have some uh, this uh, other uh, this uh, devices your altimeter this idling device then governing device also uh, so many components th that i will be discussing in my uh, module i think 4 in that we will be discussing about fuel system as of now you should understand that there are only two types of fuel system one is the aircraft fuel system which is in the aircraft and another is in engine 
So in aircraft system, we have the tanks, we have the belly, we have some additional tanks are fitted like a missile. You see in the aircraft, it is hanging to like a missile. They are not the missile, in fact, they are the additional or drop tank. It is called the drop tank. So they are used and after sometimes they are dropped. So the actual fuel of the aircraft will remain and the aircraft can go for a long endurance and for the long range flight can be achieved by help of this type of uh, this uh, fuel systems. So this is the fuel system and next I am going to talk about the propulsion system. In propulsion system, if you see, the engines are mostly uh, coming to play and engine we can divide into two groups. One is the rotary turbo engine, another is the uh, piston engine. In piston engine, we have the four stroke number of cylinders. In that, we have the uh, circular cylinders, we have the V shape uh, and different types of uh, engines are used. Nowadays, we don't use uh, such type of engines in our aircraft. However, for a small aircraft, uh, general aviation training aircraft, we use the uh, piston engines. But for all the uh, bigger aircraft or the passenger aircraft, we use the turbo engine. In turbo engine, we can divide into the turboprop, turbo shaft, turbo jet, turbo fan. These are the four a special type of engine and further if you see we can use this some propulsion system for missile like a ramjet and pulse jet engines those are used for the missile system next is the flight control system in flight control system we know that the primary there are three flight control system they are the elevator second one is aileron and third one is the rudder Elevators are fixed, this you can see here in this diagram, elevators are fixed at the horizontal tail. This is the elevator here, okay, this I can see here, this is the elevator. The purpose of elevator is to make nose up or nose down. So if you, I deflect this thing downwards, then lift will be more. So if you deflect downwards, nose will go down, nose down. So if you deflect elevator down, nose will go down. If you deflect elevator up, force will act in this direction. So it will push like this and here is the center of gravity. So nose up will be there. So it is a general thumb rule that if you want to make nose up, make elevator up. If you want to make nose down, make elevator down. Very, very simple. Don't just get confused. Same way, if you want to make yaw, you want to make your rudder, you want to make your aircraft left or right. If you want to make your aircraft left or right. So what you have to do? You have to use the rudder. So rudder, if you want to make left, means the force should act in this direction because CG is here. So initially it is like this. If you want to make nose left, so it will, you have to turn your rudder towards the left. So what will happen? The flow will come from this side and the additional force will generate in this direction and nose will go to, towards the left. And same way, if you want to make nose right, your rudder should go right. So if you turn your, this thing right, the force will act towards this and nose will go towards the right. So this is the, in this way, your rudders are working. Third one is the ailerons. Ailerons are mostly fixed at the tip of the, both the wings. Left wing and the right wing. I am just showing this is the aileron. These ailerons, if you want to make that, if you want to make that your right wing should go down. So what we, you have to do? This wing should generate more lift. Left wing should generate more lift. And right wing should generate less lift. So if you want to generate the more lift, this has to increase the angle of attack. It means the aileron has to 
go down like this. Aileron has to go down. So if you want right wing down, your left wing aileron has to go down. And the right wing aileron has to go up because you have to reduce the lift force in the right wing. And you have to increase this lift this much. And here it is very small. So this difference in lift will try to move in this direction. Rolling will be in this direction and vice versa. If you want your left wing should go down, so right wing elevator will go down and left wing elevator go up and your aircraft will roll towards the left. So in this way, these are the flight control system. Nowadays we have the fly-by-wire and some fly-by optics, autopilots and all. This all we will be we'll discussing in due course of time. As of now, you should understand that how many flight controls are there and what are their function and, and how it is working. So it is working with the help of the linkage and all. And in this way, I have already discussed in my previous classes. And, and this in this uh, last one is the hydraulic system. You know that the mechanical power, it is when aircraft is flying a lot of aerodynamic forces are generated by the deflection of the uh, control surfaces. This power if pilot is using by manual, it will be very difficult. So this power is transmitted by the help of the hydraulic system and this hydraulic system is operated with the help of the hydraulic pump, jacks and other things and these all will be discussed in the course of time. We have also discussed about avionics system in our previous class. In that, we have seen that navigation, control, communication. What is the navigation? If you want to go your aircraft from place A to place B, from Hyderabad to Mumbai or from Hyderabad to Chennai or from Hyderabad to Delhi, how you will reach? So there are few equipments which are fitted inside the aircraft. They are the radio operated or they are also NRCL operated. So they will give the direction and it will be seen in the pilot display and aircraft will go as per that. Communication means talking with the your ATC and some other, your communication, your uh, that your information has to reach to a particular position. Especially it is very useful when you are near the landing. Some, it is always necessary, but during landing or near the runway, when you are going to approach for the landing and takeoff, it is very, very essential that your communication has to be perfect. And now we are in the, today we are in the mission system. In this, we will be discussing about sensors, mission and computing in due course of time. So we have seen this avionic system. And in this avionic system, this is altitude, speed, heading, earth related coordinate, position, flight legs. Uh, these all things we have to see. If you see here in this diagram, this VZ vertical direction and VX in this direction and VY. Okay, so these all are indicated air speed or the Mach number, we can find out. We have the barometric attitude from here to here. Then radar attitude means from here to here, the radar, how much the radar will give the altitude means the height of the aircraft. And this is the barometry means pressure from the sea level, how much it is giving. It is a bearing magnitude. Here you can see the magnetic north and the true north. Magnetic north means it is a earth north as per the earth magnetic field. And this is the true north which is expressed. And here this you can see there is a difference. If you want to reach from here to here, your aircraft is going from here to here. This is the waypoint. Waypoint position, latitude and the longitude it is fed and Wind speed vector, these are the wind speed, so your aircraft is, is supposed to here, but you, you will be here. You will not reach into the particular location. So how you will reach? This you can see here that it is called the drift angle. So you are supposed to go from here to here, 
But if the wind is prevailing, so your aircraft will try to drift fr from this line to this line and you will reach here. So there something should be the corrected and these all equipments, they are called the navigation equipment. We have VOR, we have NDB and we have uh, magnetic deviation and so many other equipments are there inside the aircraft. These equipments are used for the navigation purpose. If you see here the magnetic north is this one and true north is this one and this angle from here to here, this is the heading. So bearing magnetic bearing, it is a magnetic bearing and this is the bearing true. So this magnetic north and if you reduce this magnetic deviation west, it is in the west direction. If you reduce, you will get the correct direction of your aircraft. So this plot is used to find out the exact heading of the aircraft with respect to the magnetic north and the true north. Okay, so there is a difference between the magnetic north and this is from the magnetic bearing and minus magnetic deviation. Okay, so these all things are used for the avionics system. <coughs> I have just now talked about the navigation. You can see what are the components which are used for the navigation purpose. So aircraft navigation systems in use are the ground based navigation aids. Ground based means they are fitted on the runways or in the airports. Those are called the ground based navigation aids. In this we have the VOR, very high frequency omni range, distance measuring beacons alongside NDB, non-directional beacon. So these are the equipments which are fixed on the ground, on the runways, on the airports so that the aircrafts can be guided as per the given frequency of the aircraft. Now next is air data and inertial navigation. Air data and inertial navigation, we use the uh, other equipments. Then with the help of the air data systems, our pitot tube, the velocity it gives, your angle of attack tubes, this all things are used. Now this third one is the inertial sensors and air data. Inertial means gyroscope, accelerometers, these all things are used for inertial navigation and air data system. Global navigation and satellite system, they are the GPS, global positioning system, GNSS, it is a 12 channel receiver and GLONASS, GLONASS is a Global Navigation Satellite System. <coughs> GNSS is a Global Navigation Satellite System. Okay, so this GLONASS is a Russian system and that is, these systems are used for navigation of the aircraft. Another, <coughs> especially for the uh, direction distance measuring and all, we have the VOR. So here we have the aircraft is here. We have the NDB, two NDB, two here. So with respect to these frequencies, the VOR1 and DME1, it will, we will reach here and after the reaching, it will go to the next and then it will go to, to the next. So every waypoint, if you start from here to Delhi, there will be so many NDBs and so many VR, VOR point in between, like Nagpur, Bhopal, Indore, Gwalior, Agra, and all. So many <coughs> VR, VR points are there, and every VOR point has got its own frequency. Pilot will tune to that frequency, and the next VOR will be the direction of the next VOR will be visible on the cockpit direction finder. It is called ADF, Automatic Direction Finder. And this Automatic Direction Finder will try to find out the VOR and it will go as per the that system. 
now it, it will go for the second and third okay, like this it will reach to the required position the air data and inertial based navigation system uh, they are the very old one and uh, still these systems are still used because your uh, radio communication uh, radio navigation can be interfered by any other person your gps is can be blocked by the us so how if in between some mechanical problem or some fault has happened how you will going to reach so for that purpose inertia based navigation system it is called ins systems are used and th they are using the accelerometer with the help of the gyroscope and by this thing we are finding out the acceleration from there we can find out the velocity and from there we can find out the distance so velocity distance and everything we can find out by the help of the initial navigation uh, system and it is monitored with the help of latitude and the longitude of the aircraft and of the earth accordingly it will work so here we, we waypoint 1 waypoint 2 and waypoint 3 here also you have the waypoint 1 waypoint 2 and waypoint 3 this is the ra radio navigation and this last one is a here this one is a inertial navigation system both will work simultaneously however the uh, radio navigation gives very accurate result and inertial will not give that much accurate but it is very very re reliable it will not fail okay so that is the importance of this two different navigation system now <clears throat> I am coming for the my topic which is today's topic is mission system and you know that the term mission system is mostly used for the fighter aircrafts or military aircrafts that term mission system encompasses everything other than avionics which directly affect the outcome of a military shot so if you can see this aircraft there are number of weapons so many weapons are fixed here missiles bombs and this all are so the, uh, everyone has got its own system how this will operate and they are operated by the help of the pilot and this pilot is using the sensors some radar frequencies to find out its objectives and its target accordingly as per the range because every here whatever weapons are there all weapons have the different range different capacity so as per the requirement of this pilot will fire a different weapon for different missions okay he will not fire all the things at a time because every time the missions are different accordingly this will be fired anything from the physical reality of the mission computer and aircraft sensors through a software uploaded onto it in the form of mission data to the process needed around the aircraft such as a mission planning. So mission planning and some data are already stored in the computer as per those data the computer will detect with the help of the sensor and it will suggest the pilot what to be done and accordingly pilot will operate that switch and the system will be operated. Mission tools and, and training. So in mission tool, we have the sensor fusion for airborne weapon system, including combat ID and the rules of engagement. Combat ID. Every aircraft has given some special identification number. Aircraft will not tell it, I am so and so, so and so, so and so. They will give some Charlie Delta, Charlie Delta like this. Some code will be given as per that code only computer will operate it means the other person cannot interfere like a password of your internet or email same way aircrafts are given some password and in that only aircraft systems will work especially mission system will work system performance enhancement and turning performance through mission data and software change so mission data and the software change accordingly the tuning performance of the aircraft will change system integration and inter 
availability through secure data links and voice communication. <coughs> so like this, we have to flight operation through flight scheduling, mission planning and debrief, system performance, prediction, assessment, trial, planning and trial data, analysis, mission data, operational mission data, setting mission data and so on. <coughs> So these are the mission tools and the, their training. So mission avionics. So what are the avionics? They are used for the mission system. They are the caution and warning system. Caution and the warning system is a part of the mission system. Digital maps. What is the map? In the previously we used to have the paper maps like this. But nowadays these maps are available with the digital format to the pilot. Pilot will switch on and it will be displayed on the screen. Display processor, this display processors are available in the system, mission system. Fuel management system, how much fuel for what type of mission is required, this will be displayed on the computer and accordingly the amount of fuel will be loaded as per that. Because if you load more fuel, you cannot carry more weapons. If you want to carry 100% weapon, you may have to reduce 20% of the fuel of the aircraft. So range of this aircraft will be reduced. Instrument control panel and modules are required. Mission computer and throttle control. These are the mission avionics, which is to be operated by the help of mission avionics. I am here for the weapon control system. It is a part of the mission system. In this, I have enhanced envelope gun sight, integrated flight and fire control system, store management computer, a weapon pylon, station unit. And what is this weapon pylon? If this is the aircraft, and this is the wing, some missile has to be fixed somewhere. Okay. So this is the pylon and here we are fixing the missile or a, any bomb or anything. This is the missile. So this launch pad where the missile, the bombs or any other armament are fixed, that point is called the pylon. So this is called the weapon pylon station unit. Now I am going to talk about mission system and in that sensors. Sensing methods in a modern civil aircraft, that is air data, air data, then magnetic sensing data, inertial sensing data, integrated system data, and the radar sensor data. Each family owns, these have their own advantages and the disadvantages of the system. Everyone is not the perfect, but we are trying to make two or more the systems in a combination and that is called the modern integrated system. This modern integrated system has a very high accuracy and it can work very nicely and gives a very uh, better result. So <clears throat> blending information from the multiple sensor, that is the meaning of modern integrated, we blend different air data, magnetic sensing, inertial system and so on. We, we, if we ma make in a club and then we get a accurate result by help of different sensors and computer will find out which one is the best result and that re result is shown to the pilot and pilot will get the very high accurate result. But how these things are working? Air sensors, air sensors are working with a pitot tube in pitot tube, we have the pitot static tube and one is the pitot tube, another is static. Here we have the static vent and this is the pitot. Pitot gives the total pressure. So total pressure minus static pressure, we get the dynamic pressure. And, and this dynamic pressure can be converted to the 
velocity. So this velocity is equal to p infinity minus p o is equal to divided by half rho. Okay, so like this we under root. So in this way we can calculate the velocity of the aircraft at the different location. Here if you see air data parameter, we have the pressure and this is the temperature. The two are the primary and another one is the derived from this pressure and temperature. We can get the altitude, we can get the indicated air speed, we can get the Vs, we can get the Mach number, standard atmospheric temperature and this is the true air temperature. These all things we can get by pressure and the temperature. Pressure we can measure by help of this and temperature we can measure by the thermometer. <coughs> so in this way we can, if icing this, so in, in this what is the problem? The main problem of this type of equipment is icing. If icing is there, this hole will be clogged. Clogged means closed. If these holes are closed here and here, it will not give the correct value and your air data system will be failed. So we should not, this is the disadvantage of the this type of system and air data systems are very much used in all the aircraft. I am going to discuss about few sensors which are used in the aircraft for the different purposes. One is the flow sensors. These flow sensors are used to measure the flow velocity of the liquid. Liquid may be lubricating oil, liquid coolant, fuel, hydraulic oil or anything, bleed air on the system. How much this fluid is moving? What is the velocity and how much pressure it is going? This is the purpose of the flow sensors. Everywhere we should have this type of flow sensor and it is shown to the pilot on the cockpit also. Liquid level sensor. How much liquid level is there in the fuel tank? How much liquid is in oil tank, hydraulic tank and all other tanks? How much quantity of the liquid is available? This is measured by the help of the liquid level sensors. Pressure sensors, I have shown the pitot. Monitor the pressure in hydraulic system including those used on moving control surfaces, braking and raising the lowering of the landing gear. We should know how much pressure is required and whether that much pressure is available on the system or not. Then only landing gear will operate. If the pressure is low, landing will not go up or it will not go down. So pilot will see that there is a sufficient pressure on the gaze. If it is showing the correct pressure, then only he will operate the lever to land, to open the landing gear, to open the, the control and all. Next very important sensors are the position sensor. These position sensors will be either linear or the rotary. Linear means in, in the same direction it is moving or in the rotation it is moving. So if it is in the same direction, LVDT is used as a linear variable differential transformer. And if it is in the moving, we want to measure then rotary variable RVDT sensors are used. Including for example, deployment of the thrust vector. This uh, uh, fighters aircraft can land on board ship, vertical takeoff and the landing. So thrust has to move up and down. How much thrust reversals are moving? That can be measured by the help of rotary variable differential transformer. Now the temperature sensor. Temperature sensors play a key role in monitoring the condition of the hydraulic oil, fuels and the refrigerants as well as temperature in environment cooling system. Types of temperature sensors we have the including bimetallic temperature. This is the bimetallic or the thermocouples. Thermocouples. Two different materials are here and they are joined together. They will have the different thermal conductivity and this will generate the voltage and this voltage will give the temperature. So this is the principle of thermocouples. Next is the air sensors, pitot static system. The pitot static pressure system provides the source 
preserved for a variety of aircraft instruments including air speed indicator, vertical speed indicator and altimeter. Pitot static systems gather two air pressures from separate ports. The pitot tube co collects impact air pressure measuring the full force of air at the aircraft moves forward through the atmospheric while the static pressure gathers static air representing the atmospheric pressure outside the airplane in still condition. This air data computers are used for digital instrument system receives data from various sensors for example the total air temperature probe, angle of attack probe and the pitot static pressure system. From here we collect the data, air data computers process the input from these sensors apply compensating factor and present information on flight display of the pilot. The electrical output from the analog sensors must be processed by the analog to digital converter while the digital output of solid state sensors can be handled directly by the computer. <coughs> air data computer compensate for the factor such as very low ambient air temperature and air density variation due to the compressibility of air at a high speed. They also output data to variety of aircraft systems like transponder, fuel temperature indicator, fuel indicator, flight management computer, autopilot system, inertial unit and flight recorder. Mission systems, we have the magnetic sensor. In the magnetic sensor, the magnets are used to find out the aircraft direction and its horizontal condition. So we have the horizontal situation indicator HSI and RMI and how this RMI is working? It is by the magnetic detector. It is a flex wall magnetic heading goes to the magnetic heading and the reference system and heading selector panel in this pilot will select and it will give the aircraft heading. Same way directional gyros are it is called DG. It is inertial heading, it is using the inertial system or mechanical system and from here aircraft heading and it will give the horizontal situation indicator. So here is the magnetic and here is the uh, your uh, mechanical systems are used and this magnetic as you can see the how the uh, it is going from south to north direction and in this way the magnetic things are calculated. So inertial systems is a mostly a position gyroscope, then rate gyroscope and etc. These three things are required for the inertial system. One is the position gyroscope. It is the here. It is shown. This is the position gyroscope. Then it is a rate gyroscope here and then it should be accelerometer and it can be Preservation of spatial system gimbling system. So, spinning wheels that holds its position. Okay, it is at the center here. This one is shown, and by this you, you can get the system. Mission system and inertial sensors. So, how first we have to find out the by the accelerometer we can find out the acceleration. Then you integrate zero to t. You will get the velocity and further if you integrate you will get the <coughs> distance. So here we have the uh, this model torque meter, permanent magnet, uh, restarting coil, kick, he, here is the case, he, hinge, pendulum arm and he, here is the coil with, with this magnetic system, here is the pickup and input axis. So as far as that Pendulum force feedback accelerometer. It is called pendulum force feedback accelerometer. So, by the help of this, we get the A. And if we integrate 0 to T, A into DT, A into DT, we will get the V. And if again 0 to T, V DT is equal to S. It is a distance. So, if, if you find out the acceleration, we can get the speed of the aircraft and how much range. It can do. We can find out by help of accelerometer. Further, we have the <coughs> radar sensors. These radar sensors 
radar altimeter it gives the height from the ground the radar it will emit the some frequency and how much time it is going from there it can find out from this location how much height is there and barometer will give from the sea level only okay so this radars are instantaneous altitude it can measure barrow altimeters altitude with respect to the sea level frequency modulated continuous wave is common radar altitude we use 4 to 50 megahertz to 4350 megahertz varies from aircraft to aircraft altitude is measured from the time delay between transmitted and received signal so how much time it is delayed divided by 2 we can find out by this help of this system it is called the radar altimeter this is the principle of the radar altimeter then we have the radar sensors a limited version of mapping of the radar a limited version of mapping radar so <clears throat> enable navigation through clouds display in a weather radar display doppler processing for turbulence i had most useful in wind shear okay so these are the systems which we use so this uh, green system <laughs> in system code we have the green system blue system and the yellow system nose wheel steering landing gear green is important blue and then yellow yellow is flaps alternators radar stabilizer and all and the green is reversal engine reverse engine. these are the control systems okay and these are the references the moir i and cbris a aircraft systems mechanical and electrical avionics okay thank you very much if any question you are welcome to us and you can send to mail to me in yd dvdi at the rate gmail dot com you are welcome to ask any question in this or and thank you very much for joining this class like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates